Rob Caputo. I'm here with Talking With Cars. I'm here with Mark Cook and his 2012 Hyundai Veloster. He's gonna talk a little bit about himself and the car and uh, we'll take it from there. Hang tight. Hey Mark, how's it going? Good. I'm Mark Cook and I have to tell you, this is the first time I've ever appeared with my car. It'll be the last time and it's only for Rob that I would do this. Because <laughs> I have to tell Thanks you, Mark. Nobody wants to see a ratty old dude in his tuner car. <laughs> In 2015, I was looking for a car. I was commuting 250 miles a day for work, and I happened to fall in love with two different cars, one of which I couldn't get to test drive. They bought cheesy airbags from China. Sorry, Honda, you <laughs> lost out. Love the Hyundai Velocitor. Just saw one from the back and the front and the Gen 1, and I was like, I gotta try one of these. Bought the car, had it shipped up from uh, down in central Pennsylvania to uh, Flemington, got to drive this little gem, it's a 2012 Hyundai Velocity, and I have to tell you, for the first 120,000 miles, this car was a dream, clutch was the same, everything came with it, uh, that was on it at the time was all stock, the car was getting about 46 to 48 miles to a gallon, on average, it was perfect for what I was doing with it. Around uh, 2016, the end of the year, I went to uh, Cars and Coffee out in Pennsylvania at the oh, Steel cool. Stacks. Was enamored with the show. I love That's the, the show that's stacks. in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, yes. right? Where the Steel and Stacks are. and Steel Stacks in the background. It's an old steel mill in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And the cars there were amazing. Like, you, you can't even say when someone pulls up and they have a car from like just in general it was like park one day and a guy pulls up and he's like in this old fiat i'm like it's a fiat for tone <laughs> and it's like i haven't seen one of those since i was a kid and he's like yeah my uncle left it to me and there's stories and i love the whole thing about the people and that's what absolutely me about rob's blog was that you know being and we're going to talk a little bit more about mark too right yeah. a little bit more about your history and and how you really got into cars well that's how it happened for me like, it was as a kid i played my brother had a, a, a spitfire that was neat and i, I like cars i had a uh, lincoln mercury capri and i was the first guy you ever saw who put a body kit on a lincoln mercury capri <laughs> in 1982 and nobody knew what it was once i put the body kit and i set a gold chrome and chrome chrome uh Kreger rims on the thing yep i put wides on it uh it, i started modifying a little bit a bunch of stuff happened in my life and it was no longer important for a mm -hmm. long long time here we go 2016 uh, mid 50s and i buy this little commuter car and I go to this car show and all of a sudden i'm like i wonder what i can do with this thing <laughs> so i started reaching out i started joining on facebook like every velocity Monday group i could find so when you bought this car this was this Completely was essentially stock, stock. everything it, about it it looked this was Day one. That was the first day I bought the car. That's where we began. That's amazing. And, and it's such a unique car to begin with. I mean, there aren't many vehicles on the road that kind of look like this. It's a so it kind of really, yeah, three door, right. exactly. So it's asymmetrical. It's just a neat looking car to begin with. Gen 1 has different lines than Gen 2. The Gen 2 is a little more striking lines, but the Gen 1 just, just enamored me with the whole idea of what can I do with this thing? I, mm -hmm. I like the way it handles, but it'd be nice to get on the highway and feel a little more pep. It would be nice to handle through the turns. It felt good, but what could I do with it? And I started calling companies that were handling parts for like the Velocitor Turbo and a few others. And I would say to them, I have a Velocitor Nav, which is normally aspirated vehicle or normally aspirated Velocitor, depending upon who you talk to. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what can I do with it? Like, I'm, I'm interested in adding or putting a turbo in or doing any of these things. And that was things. the beauty about these cars, right? Because the aftermarket for the, the Veloster was incredible. I mean, there was well, a actually, lot out there. In 2016 and 17, there was nothing, nothing out it there. It was soon after it that. It blossomed in 2018. Okay. All right. Like, when I started contacting vendors, I would say, don't, like the turbo versions, there was some stuff out there, uh, BOVs, so you can make, you know, so when you, you wanted to hear this whoosh, yeah. you hear it a little louder and you could get a better uh, flow for the air. There was intakes made for it. Oh, that's uh, excellent. There was body kits made for it. And I would contact them and say, like, yeah, I have this normally aspirated velocity. I'd like to do, and they'd be like, why? 
Yeah. And I was like, because I can, yeah. and I want to. And they were like, you know, it's not really a market that we're into, but tell me what you want to do and tell me, you know, a little bit about the car. And I was like, well, I, I commute in it 250 miles a day, and I'd like my commute to be a little more fun. Yeah, exactly. And so I happened to be speaking to a few people, and I, I really befriended some really good people. Uh, Greg B. from SoCal Garage Work, Josh Sadler from KDM Tuners, a bunch of people took it upon themselves to like give me advice. Uh, Kyle Bennington, a bunch of other people that were on the big vendors on Facebook and in general mm -hmm. don't want you to buy junk. People out there would love you to buy every piece right, of junk right. they have. This is quality <clears> stuff. These guys want your car to be something that somebody else goes, hey, I saw this on Joe Schmo's car yeah. and I want that. Yeah. And they want something that works for you because they don't necessarily want to hear the problems. Yeah, they exactly. want to hear the success stories. Right. So these guys gave me really good advice. And I have a good friend, Danny, and I said to him, you know, I'm thinking about some stuff. He says, I'll help you with whatever you want to do. So we got to the point, and we're going to jump fast. In 2018, there was a huge expanse in the market. Okay. I had gotten from Unique to Korea, uh, domestic only, a, one of their strut towers custom made. And it's usually only done in the domestic market. And the same guy who hooked me up with this hooked me up with a rear sway bar from White Lines, Korean domestic only. Okay. And I have a 19 millimeter rear sway bar. I have an uh, ultralight aircraft quality uh, unit for the strut tower. And that, that locked in the suspension. It handled mm -hmm. so much better. Uh, I put better tires on it. I was a big fanatic of, of hand cook. I'm now running Continental Extreme Contacts on it. Uh, I couldn't get the ones I liked, so I didn't get it. I bought a set of ultralight uh, Enki wheels, which, believe it or not, these are the original same tires, it's a really same sharp wheels looking. that I've had on this car since 2016. That's so impressive. The first, one of the first mods. InGen made an intake for it, which I modified to go right into the wheel well. I don't have a, a, a wrap on it for water, mm -hmm. but I don't need one. It's behind the splash area and never gets really wet. And cleaning it's a pain in the butt, but it does work. The in, the catch cans, I'm running to the intake side gets virtually nothing. The PVC side was the key. Uh, gas direct injection engines, whether it's a Korean one or German one, create a lot of uh, intake mess because they recirculate all okay. of the exhaust back through to get better emissions. Right. So the cold air uh, catch can catches that. I have a media that I bought at like Home Depot, mm -hmm. stainless steel, and that in the bottom of the catch can. And I can tell you, when they change over the fuels now, when we get into a winter mix, the ethanol With mix, the ethanol? Yeah, it becomes more liquid and yuck in there than oh, yeah. all summer long. Oh, I can imagine. So that's one of the things I did with it was put the uh, catch cans. Then I wanted it to shift better, so six element has a shift kit for it so i've shot solid shifter bushings a short shifter i couldn't i didn't want to change the center configuration for the shifter right so i bought a company servati makes a uh, shift conversion so i have an aftermarket shift setup in it okay uh, i got involved with some people because i wanted to look nicer um, uh, mitch turner at mushu and me did some decals for me i happen to be totally enamored this is my new half-ass decal this is the original, which I happen to love and I've never removed it. I chose my own number. So uh, number 500 was your, yeah, your selection? Yeah, just, just decided. The Minions, <laughs> everybody loves the Hyundai Minions. I, I'm a little kid at heart and that's one of the things I gotta tell you about it. So, in along with that, I also wanted to lower the car. So, How much did you lower this? It's about two and three quarters of an inch on the front, three and a quarter on the back. Okay. Coney makes struts for it, and Evoc makes a good pro kit. So if you don't want to go with, you know, coilovers or air, if you don't have the money for that end, it was a nice way to go. But Coney doesn't make Definitely. strut housing, so you cut the originals with a hacksaw. You don't want to see me with a miter gauge and a hacksaw, <laughs> brother, ever. It's an insane thing. The engine set up itself. I traded in 2000 and uh, end, end of 18, beginning of 19, my engine started giving me trouble at 120,000 miles. Mm -hmm. I found a donor car at a, uh, a salvage yard and went and picked up this engine in the back of a rental truck. And I the fuel pump that. that's on there, the fuel lines are from KDM tuners, they're solid braided, 5.8s. So 
so it's an upgraded fuel system for it. It runs all the way to the back. Uh, wow. Like I said, I worked with a guy uh, from Korea for OEM parts, and uh, he is probably, uh, if you're a fanatic about getting your parts quick, two days ship from Korea beats anything in the U.S. <laughs> and, and the reason is nobody's figured it out is they're almost three days behind us. Or ahead of us True. In, in Korea. So when he sends it out, it's three days ahead of three us. Three days ago. <laughs> But I also wanted a piece of artwork. A friend of mine, Brian uh, Romalo, had a Velocitor, him and his wife, and he had a winged angel of death. And uh, Art Institution, Kerry, painted this for me in 2015 or 16. It was one of the other first things I did with it. Uh -huh. So it's lowered. It has a shift kit. It has a boiler exhaust. Uh, when I swapped out the engines, I also went to OBX and bought their racing manifold, catless downpipe, and over at Marshall's Garage, they hooked me up, and a guy, uh, Dennis, welded me a bung on there. Oh, nice. So I run my O2 sensor through a bung. Cool. So it's a catless, normally aspirated velocitor. The secondary cat is gutted to free volume, mm -hmm. because with these, you do have to have some back pressure. So the car itself. Right now, I'm running uh, the last dyno I ever did. I actually did a run of three with uh, out in somewhere in Central PA. At uh, oh my God, I don't even remember what show it was. It's been about a year, and I did uh, 192, 189, and 196 out of it in three runs. Oh, not bad. So right now we're figuring I'm about 190 horse. And at stock, when you originally got it, how 129 much horse? 129 horse. horse, horse. <laughs> So it's, it's got some get up and go. Right now I'm running a spec stage two plug in it. Okay. Uh, that Marshall threw in for me. It's going to be swapped out for different rotors and uh, and calipers. But I'm running uh, Brembo rotors mm -hmm. on the front and a different aftermarket set on the back. I'm going to be replacing the full set together uh, pretty soon. Was the, a spoiler? Uh... The wing I got through a company called JSP in California. They do wings for uh, the marketplace doing cars that do uh, autocross mm -hmm. racing that are front wheel drive. So it's not a downforce wing, it's a stabilizing wing. This car is more stable over 80 miles an hour yeah. than it is under. Uh, and friends have helped me along with this car every bit of the way. I do not have an extensive background in mechanics of any sort. Right. I'm a retailer, right. but my friend Danny, when we swapped out the engine, said, these are the tools I'm using. This is me taking the front axle out of the right side. He hands me the tools, have at it. He taught me how to pull the engine. How to he do dropped it. it out from underneath. There's pictures on my at Fat Ass Panda Velocitor, at Fat Ass Panda Velocitor That's on, the on Instagram is the complete uh, build of this car. And it also has some really neat startups. The first time I started the car, it was minus six in an old garage that hadn't been used in about seven years. Okay. And uh, it was pretty freaking cold. That's cool. And it scared the <laughs> shit out of me. Yeah, I can imagine. It was really neat. So the car now has Op 7 underglow on it, uh, both underneath, around the back. And yeah, I wish it was a little real. darker outside, but yeah, you could definitely see it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I just love it at night. I've you are the first person to see my storyboard from Mitch Turner and Mushu and me. I love the storyboard. I was hoping to show it at a couple of shows. I can't tell you. Also, I have to tell you that some of the most beautiful things on this car is the wrap. Yeah. Mike from Wrap That took the digital pictures of that artwork under the hood and made me this, which I absolutely adore. My wife wants to know if I'm 12. <laughs> the answer is probably I run when I do bit hard. <clears throat> yeah when I run shows I run uh, 4k digital dash cam and 4k GoPro 6 on the hood or roof depending upon where I'm driving mm -hmm. I used to have it in the grill Mike Stochi who's uh, a phenomenal fabricator for SoCal Garage Works SoCal uh, supplied me with the uh, custom lip which I'm a horrible painter uh, I did both the front end and the uh, and the and you painted the both, and then I had a company TSP Performance in Pennsylvania did the clear coat for me because I was absolutely out of my mind. <laughs> this is the biggest piece I've ever painted, and I just I made a mess out of it, but it, it still looks beautiful. It looks good. It, it yeah, really definitely. Does. I actually have a hideaway uh, license plate 
Oh, nice. A friend of mine has the motorized version. He has nothing but problems with it. I just love it for shows. Yeah, the manual is just fun. It works beautifully. For you, are those headlights LEDs? Is it? Are those LEDs or? It's an LED conversion from Korea. Okay. I actually have blue ones for show that I found out are illegal in New Jersey. 6K ultra blue lights are uh, for cops and uh, emergency <laughs> vehicles. I didn't know that. I was driving around for about three months and finally a trooper pulled me over and said, you can't have this. But I'll give you a startup. Yeah, definitely. I'll probably close to the best part of this whole car. That never gets old. That's great, Mark. So this is my uh, carbon fiber wrap. I wrapped that. Did the bezel for the the uh, radio. Uh, I'm running a 60 millimeter uh, throttle body from uh, Hyundai Elantra. It's ported with a KDM tuners uh, port for meth and nitrous. I'm hoping to do a 50 shot in the spring, and let's see what 50 shot does for. <laughs> driving along and enjoying myself with yeah, others. Man. I don't play well with others with this yeah. car. I, I actually do and don't, but <laughs> I, uh, I tend to get into some enjoyable rides through Pennsylvania and stuff. Yeah, it sounds so cool. It'd be, be nice to throw another 50 horse in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A little That'll kick. help. <laughs> I, I tell you what, it's been a pleasure. I, uh, the interior needs more modification. I spent uh, way too much time and money on the outside mm -hmm. and on the engine and drivetrain. Uh, I wanted it to be able to go go as much as I wanted it to be able to show. Yeah. And, uh, it does a little bit. It's of that driving. balance between the two where it's comfortable to drive, it's got the power you want, it looks great. Yep. You yep. know, when all those things converge, then it's it's a, it's a great thing. Yeah. And now it's it's time to update some of the interior again. Uh, I have a possible purchase going through. I'm waiting to see how the young lady makes out who's. She's parting out because she's selling her car and getting into a new project, and she has this SoCal custom uh, wheel that I want. Mm -hmm. There's one other I would love, but at uh, nearly a grand. <laughs> you, you know my wife. She would stab me mostly. <laughs> yeah, she would. You got to do that on the down low, Mark. No, but she's going to sell me her uh, custom carbon fiber uh, SoCal Garage Works Hyundai wheel. And all the radio controls, everything fits right in it. Perfect. It's custom made from an OEM style. And uh, that'll look phenomenal in here. Uh, like I said, the Cervani is nice. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think we're out of time, and I'm glad because I'm running out of things. To yeah, no, absolutely, but, Mark. I I really appreciate it. I mean, this is fantastic, and I think this is going to be one of many that we're going to do. Right. Um, you know, I know you. You know, a lot of other Hyundai uh, fanatics. You know, and and they're really interested in doing the same thing that you're doing right now, and. Right. Uh, Maybe what we could do is we could meet with them. I think that'd be a fantastic thing, you know? My friend Jimmy is just uh, modifying a 2020 uh, Hyundai uh, Sonata. Or a Elantra, excuse me, Elantra Sport that he's got now. He switched three cars in the last couple of years. But he, uh, that one's really neat. It's yeah. neat to see. So we'll have to talk talk yeah, to him some about it. market stuff going on that. <laughs> Uh, some good friends that have some really nice modified stuff. Uh, but I appreciate it, Mark. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think we'll end it there. And I, you know, we'll 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 touch base and. Yeah, because a lot of stuff I do myself. The uh, the eyelids. I actually mm -hmm. made a template, and I buy the carbon fiber off of like eBay. Yeah. This I went from black to red, and then made another set of black when the red didn't work out because it's sun. The black looks so great. Because this is an outside car. I don't have right. a garage for it. I have an old two. 
220-year-old uh, carriage house that's full of stuff. <laughs> well, thanks again, Mark. I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you at the next car show. Thanks. Got it.